I'm taking this Citroen C1 high level brake light and I'm doing an LED bulb conversion using these bulbs from Auxito. Obviously the first step is to remove the light. So for that you will need a Phillips number two, PH2, not a posi. Remove the two screws, one at each end. Now depending on how long your light has been on there, you might find that the light is stuck to the uh, body. You might just have to get a plastic trim removal tool underneath it to uh, prise it away. It comes out of the uh, hole in the body, squeeze together these two tags and the bulb holder comes off. Squeeze that tag on the connector. To remove the main body from the car just pull the washer pipe off. Now you might think well that's hardly difficult just swap out the standard filament bulbs for some LED bulbs. Any old LED bulbs will do. Surely. Well, if only it was that simple. There are actually some special requirements about the bulbs. If you come with me to my work table, I'll just very quickly explain those to you. If you look at the main body of the light, you'll see that there are these curves in the shape with the bulbs fitting into the back of these uh, curves. These, these curved pockets are parabola shaped. And if you look very carefully inside, it's hard to see, but inside they're mirrored. They're aluminium coated to be reflective, just the same as uh, a reflector headlight is. I've split apart an old knackered light so you can see inside and look at the parabolic reflector. Now these parabolas are designed to take a standard bulb which always has the centre of the uh, filament just there on the bulb. So the centre of the light source is always in the same place and that focuses the beam and you get a full beam coming out of the back of the light. So what happens is if you use one of the multitude of multi-LED uh, conversion bulbs that are available on the market, you'll find that when these bulbs are fitted, the light source is not in the right place, not in the same place as it is with the original bulb, and the light out of the unit is not consistent and doesn't fill the rectangle. I'm showing you that in a picture now. With one of these bulbs, there's a centre spot and it has a dark area around it and it's even worse depending on what angle you uh, view it from. So it's therefore important to find a bulb where the light source is in exactly the same place on the LED bulb as it is on a filament bulb. Over the last couple of years I've tried a number of different types of bulbs and it, it took me several goes before I found out about this parabolic reflector but I also found that it's important to use red bulbs. If you use white bulbs they're so much brighter than the standard filament bulb that they just wash out the red colour from the lens and they will actually fail the MOT in the UK for being too white. These light units are also extremely prone to water leaks because the, uh, the design of the gasket here and the shape where it goes is actually very poor and it breaks down and these leak water in which mostly ends up in the boot uh, often around the spare wheel well but on its way it also gets over the bulb holder and damages the bulb holder uh, by corrosion. That can lead to uh, bulbs going out. It also leads to poor contact between the bulb holder and the bulbs themselves, which is something that you really don't want to happen if you're fitting LEDs. So before you fit LEDs to this uh, bulb holder, it's important to check the bulb holder condition and recondition it if necessary. And I'll show you how to do that now. What happens is that you get corrosion around the contacts and also the contacts spread a little. Also what's probably not so obvious and you've probably never spotted is that the design of these bulbs is such that the little wire contact for the filament is on the opposite side of the flat of the bulb for the two poles. And so what you have in the bulb holder is a flat side of the contact and a sprung side of the contact and you'll see again that the flat side is on opposite sides for each pole. Those flat sides are the sides we really need to clean up and we can do that quite easily by cutting a strip off a emery board that you would use for filing your nails or use a very fine needle file if you've got some and just get in with the emery board and clean up that flat contact area. Do that on all four all the way around. And once you've done that, with a small flat screwdriver or another suitable tool, get in and bend the contacts towards the middle. Do that on both sides. That way to make sure that you get good solid contact 
at all of the bulb contact points. Also a good idea in my opinion to use the same tool just to clean up the contacts for the uh, harness connector because they too may well have suffered from water damage. And then finally as a last step just before we put it all back together give it all a clean with some good quality contact cleaner. Shake it out and let it dry. And I will be following this video up with another video showing you how to reseal these lights to the body using a new product that's uh, just recently come onto the market. This is one of the reasons why we're converting these lights to LED. When we, once we reseal these to the body, we want it to be reliable and we don't want to have to take it off again to change bulbs. And LEDs have a much longer lifespan than ordinary filament bulbs. It also improves the look and visibility of the brake bulb as we'll see in a bit. And once it's dry, carefully fit your LED bulbs into place and push them home. Before we finally put the light back together, with the help of a friend or a suitable tool, press the brake pedal to bring the brake lights on and connect the bulb holder only back to the harness. We want to make sure that these LEDs are working fine and also that they don't flicker on and off with a bit of vibration because it's the vibration from the road that causes these contacts to go loose over time. So to help combat that, we've got another little trick. Either with a tube of temperature resisting silicon with a very fine hole in the end of the nozzle or like I'm doing here with a hot melt glue gun, put some sealer or glue on each side of each bulb to hold it into place cut the strings off when they dry. A bit of silicon or hot melt will help to stop the bulbs vibrating in their contacts over time and prevent them from coming loose and getting poor contacts which will keep them working but is not so strong that you would never be able to take it apart and replace the bulbs should they fail. So don't go using anything like epoxy or super glue. And of course double check that everything is working perfectly and that all four bulbs come on that they're solid in position, no flickering. Then it's just a simple matter of putting it back together the way it came apart. Don't forget your rear washer tube and screw it back into the body. And I'm sure you'll agree, although I don't think the video does it justice, that that is a much, much better light than it was before. It's much redder and a fair bit brighter. So hopefully it will decrease the risk of being hit from behind by making the light more noticeable. I will follow this video up with another video on how to seal this light to the body with the new product that's recently on the market as promised earlier. But I think this is a first important step before doing that because you want to have good quality reliable bulbs in there that are gonna work for a long, long time. Links to these bulbs are down in the description along with a uh, code that you can use to get some discount from Oxito directly. If you found this video to be useful, Please consider supporting the channel and I shall see you next time.